Hey everyone! In this video, I will be using some stone coat quick coat resin to do a petri dish technique experiment. Stick around for all the crazy things that happen. I'm Elisa with Jots Designs, and let's get started. Okay, for my colors, I am using some Jacquard Pinata alcohol inks. I've got blue violet, teal, and sapphire blue. And then for the white, um, it's the Blanco Blanco white. Definitely make sure you shake that up to um, get everything mixed up because it's a heavier pigmented alcohol ink um, and that is what causes the colors to sink. Um, so I'm gonna get the resin mixed up here. It's a one to one ratio resin. And again, it's a quick coat. So it actually only really has about a 15 minute work time um, before it definitely starts setting up. And that's generally, when you're doing it this way, you'll see what happens um, when you have it in a deeper mold and whatnot like this. So I'm just getting that mixed up. And um, because it's a thicker resin, it is just riddled with bubbles, as you can see. And I expected that. I just kind of wanted to see how the alcohol inks reacted in this quicker resin. For the Petri technique, you drop um, a drop of color and then you're going to add a drop of white on top of the color. And again, because the white is a heavier pigment, it's what causes the color to drop in the resin. And um, I'm going to get it sped up here, but you're going to still be able to watch it because this is kind of the best part of doing alcohol inks in resin is watching them um, as they react to each other. And I will be back in just a little bit. After several minutes it stopped moving and I grabbed a toothpick and I just wanted to see what the swirls would also do in the quick coat resin um, to see if they stayed or or did anything at all and then I grabbed some crusty parts out that I had no idea why they happened but they did and I was setting up for some other petri dishes and I looked over and I saw that it was bubbling so I thought I'd grab the camera and put it on here really quick um, and really, this is just the resin is super angry that it's in um, a mold and that it's thicker than an eighth of an inch, really. Um, so it is curing quite quickly. Um, this overall took about two and a half minutes, and I've got this right here sped up to about four times speed. Um, but you can see how it's basically just hardening um, within that two and a half minutes completely. And at the end here, I, I used the toothpick to see how um, hard it was. And it was pretty sponge-like still, a little rubbery. Um, but I let it cure overnight so that way it had time to cool because it got really hot as well. And I wanted to preserve all those holes that were created. So I grabbed some clear cast resin. Um, it's the clear cast 7000. And I got that from the epoxy resin store. And it's a one-to-one -one ratio resin, but you can do it by weight or volume. And I actually like measuring the resin by volume now a lot. Um, so I have my little digital scale there and did the one-to-one -one ratio, getting that mixed up. And then I'm going to pour it in. And because of all those holes that were created um, by the resin curing so quickly, there are a ton of bubbles. And... I start with a toothpick trying to pick out all the little bubbles and then I was like why am I using a wooden toothpick because I could also be creating more bubbles so I grabbed some silicone paint brushes and kind of went to town on digging out those bubbles 
Um, and then eventually I gave up and decided I wanted to put it in my vacuum chamber and um, pull out as many bubbles as I could. And in order for me to really do that, I needed to cut the piece off so it could fit. And the pressure's going down, usually it goes down to about uh, minus 20, um, a little bit more usually. And it's just pulling all the bubbles out. Um, and it's really fun to watch too. And you can see it kind of drops really quick because I don't want the resin to overflow the top of the mold. So I release the pressure um, and it collapses the bubbles a little bit. And I do that several times until it eventually just kind of starts popping on its own, um, which is what it's doing right now. But this process took about a half an hour. And by half an hour, I, I decided to stop because it was moving pretty slow. Um, so I released the pressure one last time. And you want to make sure you do that really slow um, so that the piece itself doesn't just go flying all over the chamber. Um, I took that over to my table and I did just pop the remaining bubbles that were there. Most of them did come out of the little crevices, but there were just a few little left. Um, I expected the mold to be ruined because it was bubbling and got so hot, but it actually did really well and is okay to use again. So it turned out a lot better than I expected, um, especially because it did get so hot and was bubbling like that. There is a lot of detail in there. Again, it's just riddled with bubbles though, but it's still really cool. Um, and there is a lot of details on both sides. So here's the close-ups. And thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please give it a thumbs up and make sure you're subscribed to my channel. Let me know what you thought of this fun experiment in the comments below and if you have any questions. Uh, links for the products and ways to help support my channel and keep it going are down in the description. Make sure you check out my art shop and my Amazon shop too. And I will see you next time.